Hello geeks and gamers, Man, I'm here with your gamer goggles. Today we're going to do a flip through of the ultimate campaign from Paizo for the Pathfinder role playing game. <clears throat> this is a quite an interesting book. Not quite what I expected when I uh, looked at doing this uh, flip through. Uh, first things first, it, there's not as much art in this book as there is in a, a few of the other books that they have done. Uh, but the art that is in here is what you would expect from Paizo. Uh, there's four main parts. The character background, downtime, campaign systems, kingdoms, and war. Uh, we're just going to jump right in because there is a lot of content. And I'm going to cover as much as I can without boring you. Uh, very first thing that you're going to notice is in the intro... Well, this isn't really the introduction to the book. This is the introduction to character background uh, they go through how to create your character background your unique concept they give you a big outline on how to do all of that but then they they tear into other things like social rank region magic uh, first love adulthood things of that nature and then they they add a whole there's like all of this right here is character background still uh, you Kind of probably can't tell it. I mean, it's 40, 50 pages of the book, roughly. Uh, but one thing I wanted to touch on is traits, which is nothing that's terribly new. But they, what they do with traits is they they expand some of them. They add social traits, uh, faith traits, which they they're new to me. Um, and. Oh, magic traits. That was what I was struggling to find right there. Uh, and then they go in, they, they add some drawbacks, which is which is new, kind of new. I mean, I like the idea of drawbacks, but uh, in the same sense, I don't. Because they do one great thing. They give you something. For, well, let's look at one. Let's look at Headstrong. You feel compelled to correct every action argu and argument that contradicts your worldview. Whenever you witness an action or hear an argument that contradicts your alignment, you must attempt to stop or correct that action or argument. If you either don't try to stop it or fail in your attempt, you, as educated by the GM, you're shaken for one hour. Now, drawbacks are cool in the sense that they help give characters more flavor. They give them a, uh, for lack of a better word, a negative trait. Where I see the slight drawback to them is that you get things like Shaken, and a lot of players want to be more heroic and they don't really want to get into the role playing. So it's just something to keep in mind when you do it. I will probably use some of them because I think some of them are cool. Uh, now, something I have never seen before is story feats. Uh, and story feats basically are like a story within a story. A story feat reflects a goal that is often an all-consuming one that shapes your life. So, for example, they have laid out different stages for certain things. For example, the, the well, we'll go to a cursed story. The accursed story is your curse weighs down your soul like a millstone, and then they have the prerequisite, the benefit, the goal, and how you get into the when you get into the completion benefit. So they're kind of interesting. I haven't used them yet. I think uh, they might be an interesting thing for you to throw in as a GM. Uh, at like conventions or one-shot adventures. I think they're going to really spruce things up. And then the next thing I kind of want to talk about is downtime. They really spend a, a lot of time defining different details of things with your downtime in this book. In fact, if you're a group that uses downtime and you, tries to do things that's extensive with it, this is... The downtime section of this book is worth the investment just for that. They have, you, you name it, uh, animal companions, friendship, retraining, skilled work, building your own guilds, cities, buildings, 
costs, upkeeps, uh, employment of people who need to work in these things, in these areas, what you would need to do to retrain yourself to get rid of a feat that you don't want. Uh, they even have a downtime section on gathering information to make it easier than doing it in like one to four hour blocks. Uh, among that, they have other things like magic items, uh, how, to, how to build them, healing others. Like, here, Here's a list of downtime activities. We have add spells to your spell book, construct buildings, craft magic items, craft mundane items, earn capital, earn experience, gather information, heal others, lead your kingdom, promote a business. And it goes, the list goes on. There's quite a few more. Uh, train an animal. And there's a whole section, well, there's a section here, a short section on managers, uh, rooms and teams for all that stuff. And if you skip back here, the next thing is you get to some sample maps for some of the ideas they have. Uh, and then they have, like, this is a, a sample of creating a garrison. I'll zoom in on that for you, of what it would take to do that. It would take 126 goods, 32 influence, 112 labor one magic and then it lists the type of rooms that would be there uh, and it, that it's a large building and for like an underground dwelling area they have uh, instructions for like secret weapons or not secret weapons excuse me secret doors uh, types of rooms that you would put in the size of those rooms uh, and then they have downtime events and these these are broken down further from like generic building events to specific things like even alchemist events so each each thing that they discuss each item that they discuss on how, that you can make or develop with your downtime uh, they have random events that the GM can make happen to streamline your downtime uh, then we can move into you you well the third section is uh, campaign systems and in the campaign systems the very first thing that you come across is alignment they spend a good amount of time giving you a very in my opinion it's one of the clearest explanations of alignment that I've ever read in my gosh I've been role-playing since 1986 so you, can, you know what game I started with and you know what games I have probably played since then to some degree which is I mean that's a lot more vast but I the older and more mature I get, the more I decide that alignment is important. But what I find unique about it is they introduce an alternate not, a, a campaign system where they allow alignment change based off the actions of characters. Further, they have a whole subsection on companions. And when they say companions, they're not talking just about your animal companion they're talking about familiars they're talking about uh, cohorts um, and what you would do with them uh, some of this is that talks about issues of control it talks about game balance uh, there's a little right here a subsection on intelligent animals um, and remembering companions and then the next big juicy piece of the book that oh, well, I consider it big and juicy it's not necessarily big like a large number of pages um, but it, it does take up a decent chunk of the book is uh, sandbox exploration it's always something that for me as a DM or a GM I have struggled with doing just I create this great big world and this stuff's like uncharted so sandbox exploration is going to be something that I'm probably going to use, maybe not extensively, but it is definitely something that I will use in, especially when my players get into a situation where they're like, eh, we don't know what to do. If I can kind of get them out the door and into the wilderness, I'll do that. And then there's uh, an alternate or an additional system for using honor. And what's really cool about it is they have general honor and then they have, uh, different codes like the chivalric code, the political code, and the samurai code, a tribal code, and oh they even have a criminal code which is one of the things that I thought was interesting. Now uh, we should point out that honor is represented from 0 to 100 
and it it talks about that right here uh, but what I find interesting is you can gain and lose the honor and you can also spend honor for uh, favor or gifts and loans which I think uh, it might help play some characters or it might help some fill out some characters a little bit better and then we talked about magic item creation well not only do they have uh, the alternate rules for creating items in downtime but they have uh, part of as part of your campaign system they have added information on creating magic items so you have uh, pricing new items cooperative crafting upgrading items recharging charged items and then they even go into altering existing items and uh, items for profit it, it's really pretty much limitless and they list components there's even things on relationships uh, lineage uh, reputation and fame which I haven't gotten to read this section yet but it, it is very intriguing to me and I hope to read it over this weekend uh, but uh, after that you move into uh, chapter 4 which is kingdoms and war and pretty much the important stuff that you should know about this section is listed right in the overview which is the key parts of kingdom building rules that you'll be referencing are as follows explanation of the kingdom terminology used throughout this chapter step-by-step -step instructions for founding the kingdom which they even listed it's on page 200 turn sequences for establishing a kingdom step-by-step -step instructions for how to found your first settlement game stats for types of buildings settlement district grid uh, kingdom sheet and they then they go back here and they go through all the the different terms of what they mean uh, and then over on the page 199 they have a whole set of uh, the quick reference for for you so everything's laid out and it's easily accessible uh, and then they go into different types of roles royal enforcer magister for example royal enforcer deals with punishing criminals working with the counselor to make sure the citizens feel the government is adequately dealing with wrongdoers and working with the marshal to capture fugitives from the law the royal enforcer may grant civilians the authority to kill in the name of the law benefit add your dexterity modifier to your loyalty so they put a lot of thought into what different uh, positions would be then they talk about build points and uh, wealthy or wealthy sponsors and it, it keeps going on and through it, it's quite detailed I haven't actually built a kingdom with it yet it's something that I'm more interested in GMing uh, I'm pretty sure that my son will be the first one to build a settlement slash kingdom with these rules in uh, Matt world if, if we keep flipping through you'll come to uh, gaining experience for leadership uh, but what's more important is excuse me uh, is the quick reference sheets in the back for all the different types of buildings that are, are used and you can see that this is a pretty length you know it, it's pretty detailed and then where is oh then they have uh, uh, just like they did with downtime they have several events and this is I, I should note that the section section 4 kind of plays off your downtime it, it allows you to work into building your kingdom and into kingdoms warring uh, they have images for you to use for your map making and for your different types of buildings or 
sets of buildings. Waterfront for your city, different like a corner piece. Uh, so they they would be generic, but yeah, it's a decent visual. I mean, not everybody is going to build their whole city. Uh, and well, here's the grid, and here's the settlement name, and here's the work, the 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 effective worksheet for developing. And then over here, you have the kingdom sheet, which lays out your different leaders, your spies. Uh, it has all the stats just like you kind of would for a character so it, it's pretty simple to make and then you can move into there's even uh, optional rules which we're not going to really talk too much about I want to kind of move into the mass combat system a little bit and we'll go and we'll take a look at the overview basically every uh, army has a challenge rating just like um, monsters would or beasts uh, the key parts of the mass combat rules are here and they they explain that the army is an army stat and block terminology used throughout this chapter step-by-step -step instructions on how to run a battle battlefield modifiers for terrain different tactics what happens at the end of the battle and once an army wins loses or flees how to use special commanders rules for upgrading and improving armies, special abilities for unusual armies such as spell casting and poison um, and then they, they have a list of sample armies so this is uh, another section that is just full of information uh, and without wasting too much to you know too much more of your time because I'm sure by now you're starting to get a little bit anxious to go out and buy this book uh, but way in the back they have all the different handy reference charts again and the army sheet is broken down with the different armies that you might have in your force the leaders and then they would correspond with it now and then you you hit the uh, index and obviously you're to the back of the book at this point uh, this book is not quite what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be how to make your campaign better. Uh, it seems to me that this book is a lot more about what you do in between adventures than it is about what you do while you're in an adventure. And it is the first book, I believe, that I have ever seen that has something for every player and every character and every GM. It truly changes what you do with downtime, in my opinion. I'm somebody who uses downtime uh, rather efficiently, but many people don't. And I think that by having a set of rules for using the, those options, players are going to find the game more enjoyable. Uh, I, I even find many of the options for downtime exciting. The campaign systems, there's a whole bunch of rules there that are additional. Uh, I'm looking forward to the honor system, and I'm looking forward not so much to the kingdom rules, but I'm looking forward to mass combat because I've always wanted to, to role play great wars uh, in a role playing system. So, this has been a flip through. I'm Matt Lemke. I hope you liked it. I hope I didn't ramble too long. This is longer than most of the flip throughs we do, and I apologize for that. And I know I probably sound a little frantic, a little here, a little there, but that's because there's really so much I want to share about this book, but I don't have two hours to do it. Have a good day.